I know what you're thinking. You saw the title of this video and you were like, Ashley girl, you've had some wild takes in the past, but I can't keep defending you. Like we know you like men, it's a character flaw and we accept you for it. But when is enough gonna be enough? I can't do it no more. And I know, I know, just hear me out though, okay? Like, let me cook just a little. Let me get in the kitchen before you flame me. I will say though, this video is gonna be a little different than what we usually do, the sit down reaction. One, because I'm not trying to uh, <laughs> get age restricted. I don't know how these people are doing these videos. YouTube is up my ass when it comes to shit like this. And two, it's just like a fun thing to talk about. Like, I feel like Saltburn is such a conversational movie because it really can kind of give you an understanding of someone's mind. And you know what? My mind is kind of like my roots right now, a little dark. So I wanna sit down and talk to you guys about this movie. It's not necessarily gonna be like a recap -y video of the movie. Definitely check out Trend for that. I think Kenny's gonna have a video by the time this is up, so. You know, go check out the girlies, go support them, love them. I just wanna chit chat, I just wanna talk. What's new? Let's get started. So the intro starts, right? We meet Oliver. He's got like the slick back hair. He thinks he's James Dean. And his first line of dialogue is, I wasn't in love with him. And he's saying this as they play the most devastatingly beautiful shots of Jacob Elordi. Like, babe, that's a face that you go to war for. That's a face you give up your dreams and aspirations for so you can have three little hymns running around. You know what I mean? Like, he's that kind of guy. But then it cuts to the title screen and I'm instantly reminded of Midsummer. Midsummer? Midsummer? How do the cinephiles pronounce it? Cause I've heard both. But I'm instantly reminded of Midsummer because of the tapestry, like the art style just felt very familiar. And in my head, I'm sitting there joking. I'm like, ha ha ha, who's gonna be drinking period blood? <laughs> Cause that's crazy. Little did I know what was coming. That was not intentional. Damn, we love a good pun. And then we're quickly introduced to this character. What's his name? Farkle? Farley. Farkle? <laughs> Let me not disrespect you like that. Anyway, he's kind of a douche. I mean, we learn later on like why he has this persona, why he has this act enabled. I just like, uh, eh, he's pretty, but like, I'm good. Like, stay away from me, please. Thank you. And honestly, everyone around our main character right now is just kind of the worst person or just like super entitled, super like, they just think really high of themselves. So I'm looking at our main character, Mr. Oliver, and I'm like, okay, maybe we have a ladybird situation. Maybe I'm gonna be able to relate to him. Because yes, babe, I also stare at beautiful men from far away and make no effort to talk to them. And then we meet this nerd who honestly, incel. School shooter, which is like bad to say, but like, the vibe, you know what I mean? Also has a Reddit account and he is an absolute terror on that account. I honestly just like would not feel safe being alone in a room with him. That's the vibe. And like, honestly, he's not really super important to the story. He kind of gives like an insight later on to what's going on, but I just had to mention him really quick because <laughs> the first interaction we have with him, I'm just like, bitch, there's a reason you have no friends. Come on, it's, it's not like I don't believe you. Please. Come on. No, I believe- Fucking ask me a song then! Like, why do you want your personality trait to be the human calculator? It's weird. But then we move on to a scene that I feel like really kind of set the tone, especially seeing it the second time around, that really set the tone of the movie and what exactly, in my eyes, it's gonna be about. I think with this kind of movie, you can take away what you want, or there's different themes that, depending on maybe your lifestyle, where you've been, are gonna be more important to you. So the one that I started to really pick up in this scene was the topic of style versus substance. Oliver is with a, I think he's like a professor with, um, I keep wanting to call him Farley. Or no, that's his name. I wanted to call him Farkle. Should we just call him Farkle for funsies? But anyway, he's reading an essay, and honestly, he's probably the only person in this school who actually does his work and who actually gives a damn about what he's reading. And he's reading his essay, Farley's listening to it, and he makes this like side little comment being like, oh, you use the word thus eight times in the article. I read it, or I, I counted it. And honestly, you have nothing better to do. I mean, is that kind of excessive to use it that many times? Yeah, but like, am I also gonna use that that many times to sound smart? Yeah. Am I gonna do what I have to to get to the word count? Yeah. Like, at least I did it, bitch. Where's your essay? Oh, you're looking a little empty-handed. You wanna sit here and talk about my essay when you're gonna turn in something written in crayon? Like, we're not on the same page, babe. Fuck, I cannot stand this puta. 
But he does make a, a little comment about style versus substance saying, yeah, like what you're talking about is cool, but there's no style to it, which to a certain extent with writing, especially you have to have some sort of style. You have to have some sort of voice. And right now, like Oliver doesn't really have that. Like we don't really know much about him, which kind of ties in with the writing. You know, it's very much so like, I'm going to say what I have to say to get by. The more you watch it, the more you can really tell that Oliver just does not fit in with these people. They make little comments because apparently he's a scholarship boy. His outfits are nerdy. <laughs> if we want to be real, like, damn bitch. Who dressed you, a scientist from the 1930s? Get a clue! And then we finally get the meeting of Oliver and Felix, and honestly, I kind of get the vibe that Felix is actually a cool guy. Like, yeah, he's in this upper class, he hangs out with these people, but there's a part of him that doesn't feel entirely consumed by it. Like, there's still a little, there's a little hope left in him, and maybe that's just Jacob Elordi's face. He looks up with those puppy dog eyes, I don't know. But I will say, this whole incident is so funny, because the situation is, Felix is on his way to one of his classes, his bike gets a flat tire. Oliver then turns around and immediately is like, here, take my bike, King. But it's just really funny to me because I feel like if Oliver could have grown wheels and turned his nose into a bell, he would have offered his body to Jacob Elordi faster and probably in a more wholesome manner than I would have. But then after that, a lot kind of happens throughout the movie to build up this relationship between Felix and Oliver. Or when I say relationship, I mean friendship. Because there are some like, vibes, but nothing ever happens. But let's be real, y'all didn't come to hear about these scenes. If you've seen some of the stuff on the internet, you're like, okay, cute, 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 let's let's get onto it. So let's get onto it. Let's fast forward a little bit to the part where basically Oliver is talking to Felix about his life and his home and his family. And if you know, you know why I'm saying it this way. And basically long story short, he grew up in like a terrible house and his mom is like alcoholic, kind of abusive, and his dad recently died. Like, okay, come on, trauma. So hearing this Felix being like the cute little soul that he is decides, hey, you know what, my family, we have a tradition. When someone dies, we write their name on a stone and we throw it into the lake. I would feel symbolize, you know, letting them go, kind of dealing with the grief, the pain, the loss. So they do this. Right? And when he passes all over the stone, he goes to throw it and completely misses the water. It lands like in this just nasty little area, just in a corner. And he's sitting there like, oh shit, <laughs> that probably is not a good thing. My ass watching it for the first time was like, me, me, I would miss too. This huge and like giant lake and I miss the water, same. But now knowing, I'm like, oh, we were trying to foreshadow. Okay, got it. Got it. So then feeling bad for Oliver, just for his, you know, general demeanor, humor, friendlessness, dadless self. He's like, hey, it's the summer. Come home with me. Come home to Saltburn, which is the name of this giant f***ing castle. Like, damn, bitch, we knew you were rich. I did not know you were cousins with Queen Elizabeth. But honestly, like, just looking at it, it's huge. And I'm gonna refer to it as a castle and a house probably throughout this video and just interchange them. Because, like, that's where they live. It's a home. But it just doesn't feel right. Like, why would you need a map? to walk around the, the place. You know, like I would be in my bedroom and have a panic attack thinking like, oh my God, I'm thirsty. I need to find the kitchen and get a glass of water. I think I'd rather dehydrate than try to navigate that entire place. I'm good. But also this line happens and I honestly think this is the most f***ed up part of the movie and no one really talks about it. But Felix is showing Oliver the place. He's given him a little tour and he turns to a corner and he says, Red staircase. I accidentally fingered my cousin here. I'm I'm sorry, what? You what? Pause, rewind. Let's try that again, because there's no way I heard that correctly. There's no way I read that subtitle. Because I thought this was taking place in the early 2000s, not the 1400s. Like, how do you just accidentally slide up into your cousin? Oh, well, you know, like, there's people who get married and don't even know that they're related. Blah, 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 blah. If you live in England and have the history and the ties that this family does, you walk around with documents. You walk around with your family tree and you double check that shit. We are not inbreeding today. Absolutely not. 
no. But then we meet the family and honestly, they're kind of just overall terrible people, but campy characters. I enjoy watching them on the screen. I feel like they have very fun quirks. They have great lines. You kind of get a sense of like the class divide between them, but in real life, I would hate them. But in a movie, I love them. But kind of going back to like getting a sense of their personality and who they are as a family, but also as people, I feel like it also shows a little bit of the divide between Felix and his family. Again, he associates with these people. This is his lifestyle. He does kind of have a little substance to him where the family is more so style. They're more so this facade, this like, we live this lavish life, we're great, we're happy, when in reality, it's probably not the case. And then they have like a cute little montage of Oliver getting into the hang of things, kind of fitting in, he's dressing a little better. And honestly, this is a turning point for Oliver. He likes where he's at. He likes the luxury. But most of all, he finally has the style and he is fitting in. But all that leads up to one of the scenes that we gotta talk about. The bathtub scene. Okay. Let's get into it because so many people, when they talk about like gross parts of the movie, they bring up this scene. And honestly, I don't think it's that bad. <laughs> and you know what? Let me, hear me out. Hear me out. Like, have I looked at pictures of people and been like, yes, daddy, put a daycare in my stomach? Yeah. Like, aren't we all a little freaky? You know? No? Maybe? Am I exposing myself? Possibly. I don't think him, if you don't know the scene, Basically, I guess I should explain that. I just assume everyone knew because how do you not know at this point? But basically, Oliver is watching Felix take a bath. Felix is a no. And Felix is deciding, you know what? I've had a stressful day. I need some me time. I'm going to um, relieve myself. And when he relieves himself, he leaves a little present in the bathtub. And Oliver is like, <laughs> yum. Which like that part doesn't necessarily gross me out. It's his tongue in the drain. You know how many roaches I have seen come out of drains? Do you know how much bacteria is in a drain? And you just want to put your tongue down there. Sir, there are different holes you can put your tongue in. If you really want daddy's cummies, you gotta go to the source, okay? You gotta get it organic if you want to put it like that. The drain, Oliver, get up. Get the f up. But then a lot of people try to defend the scene being like, oh, you know, it's very artistic and it's very important for his character. And I mean, I don't know. I'm like, is it more so a scene just to kind of gross you out? Is it more so to be shocking? Maybe showcase his evolution into actually becoming him and that facade of what we thought Oliver was is starting to fade away? Are we starting to see that he's taking advantage of Felix who is in a very vulnerable position? Probably. I mean, that's kind of how I took it, but I don't know. I think it's like, it really depends on who's watching it. But to sum up basically the bathtub scene, like my girl said in her letterbox review, you're gonna do all that, but not eat runny eggs. Sir, grow up. So then that's gonna lead into um, what is known as the vampire scene. Now, this scene grossed me out more than the bathtub scene. Not because of the content, but because if I was in that position, I think I would actually just kill myself. That's dramatic, but let me explain. If you don't know what the vampire scene is, basically what happens, Felix meets um, Venetia, which is his, not his sister. Whoa, whoa, that's a leg up from fingering your cousin, am I right? You know, he meets Felix's sister and they kind of have a moment. They're outside in the backyard. It's getting a little hot and heavy. And she's like, babe, listen, like this is so fun and all, but it's not the right time of the month. And hearing that, Oliver basically is remembering that one post that he saw on social media where it said, a period only stops a sentence. Cause honestly, he saw that, he said, hell yeah. Let me like, share, notifications on, because I'm subscribing to that mentality. And if you're kind of seeing where I'm going with it, he goes down on her. Now, listen, I know people do this in real life, okay? I'm not stupid. It just could not be me. I'm sorry, when I'm on my period, don't come near me. And it's because I feel disgusting. I don't even wanna be in my body, let alone someone touching it, trying to get in it. Right? Like, I'm miserable, I'm cranky and you wanna to try to slither up in there and disappoint me for two minutes? I'm good. I'm good. And then, and then the most disgusting part. He's, you know, doing the little magic touch down there and decides, 
I'm gonna be all sexy and I'm, you know, I'm Oliver and I can get what I want, do what I want, I'm gonna show power. He takes his bloody fingers, her blood on his fingers and puts it in her mouth. It's taking me back to when that girl ate her own used tampon. I can't do it. Because, okay, this is gonna be so gross, but people who menstruate, you will understand because sometimes, you know, you see what's coming out of you. So imagine that on someone's fingers and they put it in your mouth. Nope, nope. I don't know, maybe to some people this was erotic. This was hot, it could not be me. I'm good, suddenly I'm vanilla, the chastity belt is on. She's locked and loaded. But while this is all going on, meanwhile, Farley, the little fucking roach that he is, is sitting at his window and watching it all go down, kicking his feet and taking notes. He is watching it like it is the new episode of his favorite telenovela. Weirdo, weirdo, because Farley is, cousins to this whole family. Like, could you imagine? First it was sliding up in the cousin, now it's watching them get eaten out. It's getting a little too Alabama for me. But then he goes and tells Felix like, hey, by the way, your bestie um, is becoming besties with your sister. And Felix gets so weird about it. And honestly, I understand why, because I feel like that's already kind of an idea of like, oh, I don't really want like my friends being with my sister, especially when there's history. We find out there is History between that incel of a little bitch. He went to Saltburn, he was Felix's little pet, he was his little friend for five minutes and was like trying to get with Venetia. So Felix in his mind is like, big red X, do not try to f her, you're out. I want you to f me instead. <laughs> Cause he gives that vibe. He gives that vibe. I'm just like, babe, he is ready and available. Just let him know. Oh, yes, daddy. But I think also what it is, cause I found it really interesting that he was like friends with the other guy for five minutes. And I can't help but think that he picks people who are different from his lifestyle because there is a way of, at least in my mind, it's a way of him like kind of having some normalcy, being with people who aren't from where he is. But then there is that power dynamic that he is super powerful, he is super rich, and someone who isn't in that position is gonna be like, oh, you wanna be friends with me. It's like relationships that only benefit him. I don't know, Felix I feel like is kind of a complex character. Like when you really think about it and like the struggles that he probably has gone through and the way that he speaks to people, yeah. I don't know, I find him very fascinating. But anyway, at this point, Oliver is playing the whole goddamn family. You know, they are wrapped around his little twisted bloody finger. Honestly, Oliver is the gaslighting queen. He is pulling lies out of his ass left and or right. He is getting people to believe that he is just a saint. He is the best thing to have happened to Saltburn and people should literally kiss the ground that he walks on. Which honestly, controversial, that's a talent. People who can talk and get what they want are terrifying, but it is a talent. It is a skill. But then that's gonna lead into this scene, which <laughs> kind of have a lot of feelings about actually. We get this scene of just sexual tension between Oliver and Farley, while some drunk billionaire is butchering low in a round of karaoke. But like in a way, kind of a slay. The way he's like dancing and like, you know, using the crowd's energy for his performance, kind of a star. I don't know this man but I think I would go karaoke with him. He seems like fun. <laughs> but the sexual tension between Oliver and Farley, I, like at this point, you know, you're like, Oliver, what is your game here? Like, why are you trying to f the entire family? This is kind of weird. Like, they're not like Pokemons. You're not trying to collect them all, unless you are. Like, should we start calling you Ash? Let me know. And then more happens with that scene, blah, 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 who cares? Because then it leads into Oliver and Farley getting together. Farley is just in bed, he's snoozing, he's dreaming of all the money that he's gonna take away from this family because at this point you learn his situation is not very cute. Oliver comes in, jumps on the bed, is on top of him and starts like, I don't even know what he's doing down there, patting, stroking, he thinks it's Arabian Nights and he can just like play the little flute and get him to do whatever he wants. That is the nastiest thing I have ever said. 
I, I honestly think when it comes to Oliver, he uses sex as a weapon. And this is gonna sound crazy, but this is why I think this way. He could do other things to show that he's like taking control, like, they just wanted shocking scenes, but, and again, hear me out, cause this is gonna be kind of crazy. When I got my kitten, I know you're like, where are you going with this? I knew, you know, eventually he was gonna have to get neutered and I was gonna enter that stage of motherhood where it's like, I can't even look at you, you're disgusting. I knew he was gonna just be humping everything. And he was like three months old, four months old when he, no, he was like three. Cause I was like, it's a little soon for that no but I saw him with his toy having a little me time and I was like I'm not gonna stop you do you but can you not do it on my bed right in front of me this is weird so I brought it up to my vet and I was like yeah I think like he needs to get fixed soon because like he's reaching that peak and he's like oh here's the thing when they do things like that it's not always inherently sexual it could be more of a dominance thing in like showing that he's the top commander which I did not like I was like he's not gonna no. He's gonna be respectful and he's not gonna use it as a weapon. However, Oliver is. So with that mentality, I was like, you know what? What can Oliver like offer these people who are so empty, who are looking for reassurance, who have everything in the world, but are still confused by it, who are still lost by it. He can give them a sense of want. He can give them a sense of need. And what is the best way to connect to someone on that kind of a level? I also think Oliver is just a little freaky deek who maybe needs to be jailed. No, he does. He does. <laughs> but then get this, because you're listening to this being like, this is a crazy movie. It gets crazier. It is Oliver's birthday and Felix is like, hey, jump in my car. Like, I'm going to take you somewhere. It's a surprise. And of course, Oliver, just so f***ing giddy, blushing, kicking his feet and shit is like, yes, daddy, I'll get you get in your car and you can take me wherever you want. And you get in the car and he starts reading these signs and he's like, oh, it's looking a little familiar. And he puts two and two together that Felix is taking him home. And we find out that Felix received a phone call from Oliver's mom because they haven't even spoken. She's just like, hey, are you alive? Are you good? And Felix answered the phone because Oliver left it in the bathroom one day. Right? So he answers it and they make like this whole plan of like, oh, come over. We'll celebrate his birthday together, blah, blah, blah. Felix doesn't think anything of it because he's like, you know what? Talking to your mom, like she sounded like she's sobering up. Like she's really getting her life together. You should totally see her trying to make amends because also you're not staying at the f***ing castle forever. Like you got to figure this shit out. Oliver, terrified, shitting his pants, being like, we can't go. We can't go home. We can't do it. We can't do it. You know, you're sitting here thinking like, oh, it's because it's trauma. But my friends and I, we were joking. We are like, haha, what if he's been lying? Right? That would be funny because that's not gonna happen, right? Ha 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 ha. And then it did. You pull up to the neighborhood. It's a beautiful house. Looks like a safe, fun little neighborhood. Mom answers the door. Sober, cute as hell. You know she got like all dressed up because she finally was seeing her boy. And then she says, oh, Dad's out in the back. He'll be here soon. You mean dad that apparently died three months ago? What? And then they're sitting there having a casual conversation. Felix is so much stronger than me because the second mommy opened up the door and I heard that dad was alive, my ass is out. You're home. You're welcome, you can stay with your mom. I'll ship your stuff to you. I'm getting in the car and I'm getting the f out of here. I'm not sitting down to have some cake. We're not gonna kiki. We're not gonna hee hee ha ha. I'm done. Again, Felix is stronger than me. He sits down and he's kind of like learning that Oliver has lied basically about everything to the point where he was even saying like, oh, I'm an only child. And the mom is like, oh yeah, no, he has sisters. He has siblings. You can tell Felix is pissed. They get in the car silent as hell driving home. Get back to Saltburn and Felix basically is like, I want nothing to do with you. You're a f***ing weirdo. Get out of my house. Actually, you can get out of my house after we throw this birthday party for you because it's already planned. People are coming. It's too late to cancel. So have fun tonight, little boy, because in the morning, your ass is out. And you know, I, I think Oliver takes it well. I think he understands where he's coming from. <laughs> But then we move on to the party. And honestly, the decoration, the decor, beautiful, gorgeous. Like who planned your party? Let me know. 
That's a lie. I can't afford it. I can afford some streamers from Party City and a hat. But the thing that's crazy is like, this movie has already been wild and it somehow just like keeps going. It's just like one thing after another. It's just like, damn, can we get a break? Like I'm still mourning. <laughs> Ironically enough, I'm mourning that dad's alive. Like, I feel lied to. But they're all dressed up for theme. I think the theme, if I remember correctly, is like a midsummer's night dream kind of thing. So it's very like, there's just like a lot of characters. Everyone's just super fancy dressed up. But more importantly, we get a scene where Felix and Oliver are in this garden maze that they have at the house. And they're right by this statue. Now here's the thing. I didn't catch this the first time I watched it because I was so overwhelmed with what was going on again still mourning the fact that dad was alive the second time watching it looking at the statue i can't help but think it comes somewhat from like greek mythology or something like that now listen you know how they ask you like when you were a kid were you like into fantasy were you into harry potter were you into greek mythology i was into degrassi while y'all were learning about medusa poseidon zeus all that i was watching jimmy get shot and i was trying to figure out how i could sue the entire country of Canada. But I can't help but think that that statue and the way that they're dressed up kind of core relate to each other. Probably should have looked that up before I started filming. Hi, I'm a professional. But there has to be something because looking at Jacob originally with the wings, I was like, oh, okay, Euphoria tease. Like, Jules really is that iconic. We get it. But I do think there is like some sort of a connection there. But yeah, anyway, Oliver kills Felix. Yeah. Oliver kills Felix. He gets a little bottle, drugs him, oh, or poisons it, I guess I should say. And the next morning, mommy in the maze finds her dead son. And then they have like this whole lunch scene, which is so uncomfortable because the parents are trying to do that facade thing where it's like, everything's fine. Everything's great. Oliver, did you like your party? What'd you think of the cake? Oh my God, yeah, I know I love chocolate cake. Or no, I think she hates chocolate cake. Who the f cares? But at this point, Oliver kind of frames Farley being like, oh, like, why are you so upset over him dying when like you were at the party doing lines, you know, and you were offering it to anybody. I'm sure that's what happened to him. And the parents hear that and they're like, Farley, you're <laughs> cut off. Get your ass out of here. And he leaves and we don't hear anything from him again. And then you probably get what is the most twisted part of the whole movie. I cannot defend Oliver on this one because of what the f with the actual fuck. We get the scene where they go to Felix's funeral and he fucks the grave. Like, I feel wrong just saying it out loud. I felt wrong watching it. <laughs> like, there is just so many things that are unholy about it. I need y'all to explain the artistic vision on this one. Because again, my thing was like, like a power thing dynamic situate I don't know though like a grave but it was just more disturbing because you killed the guy you're trying to lay him to rest and you're still trying to get get you know what no then he has the scene with Venetia the sister and Venetia clocks his ass she has the tea she has the skinny she knows what's up and calls him out on it and Oliver which we know at the end makes it look like an apparent suicide they wake up the next morning it's a because she's in the bath, like when this is all happening, she's in a bath of her blood. It's just so bad. And then Oliver gets paid to leave the house, so he does, but then dad ends up dying. And this is like years later. Oliver and the mom meet up at a, a coffee shop and she's like, come back to Saltburn. Like, it's so lonely, blah, 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 blah. He becomes her caretaker because she mysteriously becomes sick. And she like changes the will so everything goes to him. And then he kills her. She has like a breathing tube down her neck or her throat. And he just pulls that shit out, blowing smoke in her face. This man is crazy. This man is crazy. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. And then, you know, just to put the cherry on top, we get the ending scene of Oliver butt ass naked with his dick flapping around like it's on a little mini trampoline, just dancing around the house, celebrating the fact that he killed everybody in Saltburn or that everyone's gone. Moral of the ending, we find out that Oliver may have girl bossed a little bit too close to the sun. Yeah. So that's kind of my walkthrough thoughts, feelings, vibes of the movie. Overall though, I don't think it was as gross as everyone says that it is. I think it's just that initial shock. I think if these people went back and watched it, they'd be like, oh, okay. Like it's, I mean, some parts are gross. I don't want to say it's not gross and sound like a weirdo, but I get like artistically where it was coming from. You really see this evolution of Oliver as a character 
and him feeling lost and kind of just being a, a weirdo because he did come from like a good house, good family, but he just like always wanted more. He wanted acceptance, he wanted to fit in. You know, it's just like, it was just never enough. He desired so much that it led him to doing what he did. I don't know, like I did not hate this movie. Like, do I think it's something super revolutionary? Not really. Like, do I think there are movies that have talked about class and divide and have done it better and perhaps have won an Oscar for it? Yeah, but it was a good time. It was a good experience. And maybe I hold it to a higher regard just because of the first experience with my friends watching it all together. It's such a core memory. Because <laughs> we were just all like, ah! If you want more videos in this kind of style, let me know. I have no problem doing it because again, did not want to fight with YouTube system and get age restricted. Anyway, next upload is something that you guys have been very, very excited for. If you watched my bonus video, you kind of know what I was teasing. Um, it's gonna cut off, cut off? It's gonna jump off a very fun, exciting month of uploads. Perhaps you'll see another person on this channel. I don't know, I don't know. But I'm excited, love you guys so much. Take care of yourself.